We've been wanting to build a table for Calvin's HO train setup. He's had it in the middle of his floor in his room for the last year or two, and we want to give it its own space, which will also let him build a landscape and sort of a world for it, which is really the point of having a model train. So what I thought we could make is something that started with the idea of a torsion box, which is a box with a structure on the inside and a thin skin on the top and bottom. It's a very light, very strong way to make a, a big flat surface. But the idea of the torsion box started to break down a little bit as I wanted to use the internal space of the box to hold drawers so we could have some storage in the table. So I have drawers inside the box and a top that we can work on and legs that attach to the underside of the box and wheels at the bottoms of those legs. It'd be nice if the table could be movable in the room that we're going to have it in. I started by making the structure that would go on the inside and the sides of the box. So I cut strips out of three quarter inch plywood. Then I set up a quick jig on the CNC table, which was basically a strip of plywood attached to the table <laughs> with some marks on it. So I could line up each of the strips in the same way on the table. So what I wanted to do to the strips was to cut out the shapes that were gonna be needed to make the box function like we wanted to. I wanted to cut drawer openings on the outside faces and on the inside structure, I wanted to make some deep half lap joints or sort of a way for the, the grid to fit together. And I also wanted to cut some dados into those pieces as well. So for the drawer faces, I saved the piece that got cut out and that would become the drawer face. So the drawers will have a fairly large reveal around the drawer which is the thickness of the router bit. And I cut some dados, which will help the pieces fit together in just the right places. Then I cut those strips to length. Having a little bit of extra length helped in holding the pieces on the table to be cut with the CNC, which is why I'm cutting them afterwards. Now really these entire pieces could have been cut on the CNC, but cutting those long lengths along the strips made more sense on the table saw. So I did it, I did it that way where I made the strips first and then modified them on the CNC. Instead of throwing a full sheet of plywood on the CNC and just cutting everything out, which would have worked as well. And I sanded the cuts a little bit, you know, just a little bit fuzzy. Then we could start laying the structure out and putting it together. So we put down the two ends and we worked on the center. So there'll be three cross pieces and then two pieces that run the length of the table on the inside. And they sort of fit together. Now, originally I'd planned for those internal joints to not have any fasteners, any glue, and they would just go together with their own friction. Also part of the design, I'd started with a six inch deep table, or thick, I guess. Then I made the sides an inch and a half taller, so they're seven and a half inches. And this would give me a little more room for the drawers and the drawer faces and let me keep some thickness for the structure of the outside of the table. But it meant putting the pieces together got a little bit tricky as I had that inch and a half space in the middle on the bottom. So everything was going along just fine and we were putting the parts together and I knew I had that inch and a half space but as we were putting the middle back together after doing part of the sides I had forgot about that and I kept trying to push the joint back together again and it just wasn't going and it just seemed like it was really tight. So I started hitting it harder and harder and we ended up 
or I ended up breaking one of the middle struts. Then realizing that we had this inch and a half gap that I was trying to overcome and that, that just wasn't going to happen without breaking apart. And what we came up with was to fix that broken section with some glue and some pocket screws. Sort of just enough to hold it together. Then I would make some blocking to hold those center joints together. So I cut some scrap pieces of wood that would go in those corners. And I put them on the inside so they wouldn't be in the way of the drawers. So they'll add a little bit of strength, but mostly they're there to hold the pieces together while we put the rest of the frame together. Now we can do the outside pieces and the frame will be held up off the floor and held together. So it all worked out in the end. Now once I put a surface on the bottom or some strips that I'm gonna run on the bottom of the struts and the tabletop on, the broken parts on the center piece shouldn't really matter that much. So I'll let that sit. Now, with a torsion box, there's a surface on the top and the bottom, and that, that kind of works like the, the top and bottom of an I-beam. The compression and tensile force in that structure runs through that top and bottom surface. So what I wanted to do is to add some strips to the bottoms of our struts, and that'll help tie everything together and make it work a little, a little bit like a torsion box. I wanted to keep the box open on the bottom so that we could get into it to run wiring for the trains. So once I had those strips on, I could lay the structure out on some sawhorses and start working on the legs. So the legs are gonna be an L in plan. So basically two pieces of three quarter inch plywood put together. And I'll miter the joint at the corner. And there'll be three pieces of basically blocking. One at the bottom, one at the top, and then one in the middle. That'll help hold that L. And it'll give a spot to attach the wheels. So I cut three dados into the inside of that L. And these will help the pieces of blocking fall into the right place. Now the last thing to do to these side pieces is to cut an angle into the outside edge. Now this doesn't really have any function. I think it just made it look a little nicer. And I wanted to cut the miter and the dados first before I cut that angle. Because if I had cut the angle first, I wouldn't have a parallel side to cut those other parts. Then I can cut the pieces of blocking that go on the inside. Now the bottom piece I want to attach the wheels to. So I want to drill four holes into that piece before I put the leg together. So I marked out where to drill those holes and I could quickly drill the, the four holes into that piece. And I used biscuits to do the miter on the leg. And I could just glue that up. Now I found I could just clamp it together and that worked pretty well. I didn't need to really do anything special with the clamping. The biscuits help hold the, the joint in the right place. And some nails just to hold it in place. Once it's nailed, I can take the clamps off and put the pieces of blocking in. So I can put the bottom piece in for the wheels and the center piece and a piece at the top. And the top piece is down just a little bit from the top edge so that I can attach this to the frame. And I wanted to add an extra piece at the bottom so the wheels would have a little more thickness to, to hold on to. Now to make all of the pieces of blocking flush, I just put the entire leg against the disc sander and made everything flush. 
Then Calvin came out to help put the wheels on. It was kind of the fun part. <laughs> but we just used bolts through the casters and into the leg. Now to attach the legs to the frame, what I want to do is have a little, basically a little plate made out of plywood and that'll get attached to the inside of the top of the leg and I'll glue, nail, and screw that to the leg. Then that piece of plywood gives me a little fin to attach to the inside of the bottom of the frame which will hold the leg and the frame together. And this will allow me to make that last attachment with screws so the legs can be removed when I need to move this table like from the shop up to the house or from the house to somewhere else. Because with the legs on, the table is really too big to move. So I clamp them in place quickly just to see if it would work. And it seems to work just fine. Then I can screw the screw the legs on. Now I can work on the drawers. And the first thing to do is to add some spacers on the frame. I wanted a little more thickness on the structure on the outside where the faces of the drawers are. So because I needed a little more width, that meant the drawers had to be a little narrower. And because of that, I needed to add a little spacer so that the drawers and the drawer slides would work within the structure. Once the spacer is added, the, the side of the spacer will then be flush with the opening for the drawer. Then I can start making the drawers. Now I've done several videos making drawers, so what I think I'll do is just put a link to the drawers for the kitchen project, which were almost exactly the same as these drawers. And if you want to see me make a drawer, you can watch that video. So it's just a simple dado joint at the corners and a bottom that floats in the frame. So the corners of the frame are glued and the bottom just floats in the dado at the bottom of the frame. Then I could put the drawer slides in. So you can see how the, the slides fit on the spacers that I put in. And the drawers seem to work. Now I made some pulls for the fronts of the drawers. I took a piece of walnut and I sketched a little profile that I wanted to cut out. And it's basically a, a sloped top with then a, a cutout on the bottom for your fingers. And that'll make the pull. So I just need to cut out that section from the piece of walnut. So I cut a strip. Then I cut the angle on the top. Then cut a dado on the bottom, which will make a space for your fingers to grab the pull so that you can pull the drawer out. And I sanded the edges of the dado, since that's where your, your finger's gonna go. Then I cut that section to, to shorter lengths to make each of the pulls. I thought after doing all this, I, what I could have done is taken some of Calvin's old wooden train track and used those as the pulls, and that would have been sort of cute. <laughs> but I did this, and, and they came out pretty nice. So I can put the face in, and I labeled all of these so the same cutout goes back into the same hole, and try and get it in the right spot. I was trying to figure out what the, what the best method to shim these up was. And I, I figured out about where the pull should go. And what I needed to do was drill two holes in the face that would be in the right spot for the pull. You can sort of see that I, I don't want the screw to go into the part where your finger goes, and I don't want it to go, come out of the angled top. And once I had that figured out, I could drill those holes. I did one, and then I stacked them in pairs so I could drill the, the same two holes into all of the faces. And I could mount the face on with clamps and drill those two holes into the, the frame of the drawer. Then clamp the pull on the front at the right location. This was probably the tricky part. With just two hands, it's, it's kind of hard. Then drill and put two screws in from the back of the inside of the drawer. 
So now the pull is attached to the frame of the drawer and the, the face is just kind of between that sandwich. So you're not pulling on the face, you're pulling on the actual drawer. And the drawers seem to work. Now I can work on the top. And this is pretty simple. It's just going to be two sheets of half inch plywood. So the table is six feet by seven feet. So I will cut each of these sheets down to three feet and have a seam down the middle. Now the table itself doesn't really have to be square. It's not gonna fit into something else. But to get it pretty close, I put screws along one edge, the short edge. Then I pulled the table to, to line up with the piece of plywood. So, sort of using the piece of plywood as a square. Then clamping it in place. So, so that kind of held the table pretty close to being square. Then I could put screws in on the other side, which will hold the table. Now my pieces of plywood are eight feet and I need to cut them down to seven feet. So instead of doing that on the table saw, I screwed them to the table and then just cut them off with a circular saw. Now I left the top so that it was just a little bit bigger than the table frame. Then I could just flush trim the top to the frame and make it perfect. This is also why I didn't worry so much about cutting off the ends of the pieces of plywood with the, with the handsaw. It's basically put together and I can bring the whole table inside now. And I marked and labeled as many things as I could, like which, where the table panel tops went and which legs went where, and which drawers went where. So I could unscrew everything and bring it inside. So the hope is when I bring the top in, the, the top will hold the frame square again, and things everything should be flush again if I use all the same screw holes. So I can take the legs off, bring the frame in. Frame's just a little too heavy for one person, I think. And we put it on and it just didn't look right. And it's like, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> so we had to flip it over. And we can put the legs back on. I had Calvin help me hold them up against the frame. They really just kind of had to be close. Then when the screws went in, the, the legs sort of fell into, into place. And the, and the seam was nice and tight. And we can take the, the saw horses out. And we had a frame. <laughs> Or a structure, I guess. And we can put the drawers in. Now I only made half the drawers, so I think at some point in the future I'll make the other half. And we can put the top on. And that, that little bit right there is me, make, me making it square again. <laughs> now in the shop, I didn't put in all the screws, I just kind of did the, the minimal amount. So I did the rest out here. Now I see this just as sort of the subfloor to the, the whole train setup. So having the screws in the top shouldn't really be a big deal because this isn't the, the finished piece. And then Calvin can start laying his train out. I wanted to get the table set up and the surface set up so that he could lay out what he wants to do and kind of see it laid out. And he can figure out whether he wants to add to it and we can start to figure out where he wants to put the landscape that he wants to make. I think he wants to make a mountain or some terrain and some kind of river and a pond and a really cool bridge, then some, some buildings for the, for the setting as well. So it seemed like it'd be good to lay it out and then we can really sketch out exactly what all of that's gonna be. So this video hopefully is just part one and it's just sort of the structure to hold the train up. And at some point, I don't know when, we'll have future videos about building the, the setting for the train. And the train seems to work. It took a few tries. It kept coming off the track in places, but it seems to be pr working pretty well now.
And I think he thinks that the layout's pretty close. He may add a little track here and there to make some of the loops a little bigger. And we have a, a few outbuildings that we've picked up from various places. We'll probably remake a lot of that. Calvin does seem really excited to have a, a nice layout space for this. Thanks for watching.